we are at the top of Serie A, but things are very tight in Italy this season. If we lose both of our next matches, we could end this episode at the second position. Get ready, guys. It's the top of the table clash. What is going on guys? I'm Alvin here and this is episode 47 of AC Regiana's Review. First of all, I would like to apologize for not having any episode in the last one week. Alright, I was actually a little bit busy with my work and, and, and I just couldn't find time to record, you know, the gameplay and all. Alright, so hopefully, you know, this season it'll be back to normal and I will upload minimum three episodes this week. Alright, so today we are going to have a top of the table clash against Napoli and Juventus. Alright, so currently in Serie A, right, we are sitting at the top of the table with 17 games played and 45 points. And you know what's the best part? We are still unbeaten. So, an invisible season is still on the card. Alright, with another 21 games to go, right, there's still a very, very big chance that we could either win the Serie A or we could bottle it, you know, at the at the second half of the season. Alright, so today, our opponent are going to be Juventus that are currently sitting in the second place. Five points behind us and Napoli that are currently sitting in the third position with seven points difference between us. All right, so if Juventus beat us today and and, and and if we lose against Napoli as well and Juventus win both of their game, they will leapfrog us and finish this episode at the top of the table and we will drop down to the second position. That is the thing that we really don't want. All right, so our first opponent today is going to be Napoli. Alright, so as you guys know, you know, they are a very, very good team with really good players in their, in their team. Mikel Arteta is actually their manager and I think he joined them this season. Yeah, he did join them this season. So, and he, even if you look at his attribute, let me show you his profile again. He is a really, really good manager in this universe, you know. So, obviously, they are going to be a very, very hard team to beat. And with their formation that they love to play, you know, 4-3-3 is going to be obviously you know uh very good against us we are playing a formation of 4-2-3-1 if you guys remember all right i know it's been one week so you you guys might forget all right and if you guys are new to this channel right do subscribe if you like the video you know do drop a like as well you know if if if, if you like the content that i'm doing today all right okay so their key player right now is axel tapia so this guy is a new gen goalkeeper and look at him he's a world-class goalkeeper guys and his attributes are seriously amazing. Oh my god, I really wish that we have this, this caliber of a goalkeeper in our team. I'm sure that we will be winning everything if we have him in our team, to be honest. Alright, when we look at this, right, in Serie A, you know, 17 games played. He has played all of the matches for them. And 10 clean sheet with an average rating of 7.15. You guys know, goalkeepers don't get good average rating. So he's getting it for them. So you... You, you can know that, you know, he is a good player, <laughs> alright? Okay, so it's going to be quite hard, you know, for us to score past him. But our players are good as well, especially our strikers. If you look at this, right, let me show you. Norman Bassett have already scored 12 goals in this season. You know, 14 games played, only 10 games start. 13 goal contribution with an average rating of 7.34. He's going to be starting today, obviously. And Lorenzo Colombo, our new addition to the team this season, we signed him from Torino for 14.5 million and he is amazing for us guys look at this i know uh you know 20 appearances but only 11 was from the bench you know he have nine starts and 11 goals scored from there and 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 it's not just that he is assisting goals as well you know you know four goal contribution you know 11 goals i think it's amazing for a new player and he is currently our best player you know um, apart from Cortinovis, obviously. <laughs> okay, Cortinovis is um is our ever ready player, you know, from since if I'm not mistaken, since season three of this uh of this series, if I'm not mistaken. All right, so this guy has been playing well for us, you know, since Serie B. I know his attribute doesn't look good, to be honest, you know, for us to be playing, you know, for a Champions League league team, and you know, um, for a Serie A team, you know, that are you know fighting for the title this season. But on the pitch, right? If you look at this, the last ten matches. 7 goal contribution, 7.4 average rating. What would I ask for more, guys? Seriously. You know, we spent about 96k. We signed him for 96,000. I think he could be the, the bargain signing of this series, to be honest, you know. 
Yeah, so yeah, uh, Lorenzo Colombo, Cortino, Wies, Adam Lozak, all of these players are actually performing well. If you look at this, right, I think uh, more than half of the of the team actually have an average rating of above seven, and even the one that is below seven, right, they are actually doing quite well as well. Like you know, Semeraro, nine point uh, six point nine eight. You know, even uh, Simon Druget, Atanasio, Marcos, Kevin Zeffi. All of them are playing well as well. You know, they are all above average and that is what I love about this team. You know, it's not only about one goal scorer and one playmaker or anything like that. Everyone is playing their part in keeping us at the top of Serie A. So, yeah, this, this, this is what I love about this team. You know, we don't buy players, you know, um, you know, with high transfer value or anything like that. We buy above average player and we actually make them gel together as a team and we play well. So hopefully, you know, since I'm bigging up the team, you know, so highly upon today, hopefully they are going to be able to show that on the pitch today against Napoli and Juventus. All right, guys, so this is the team that I'm going to be fielding against Napoli here today. It's going to be Plogman in goal. Our four defenders are going to be Ivan Enrique, Simon Druget, Sofiana Madi, and Ata Nasio. Renato Vega will be playing alongside Doyle Hayes as our two defensive midfielder. Adam Hlozak, Ismail Garbi, and Lorenzo Colombo will be behind Norman Bassett as our striker up front. Let's just submit the team and get into the match. All right, guys, so we are going to be facing Napoli away from home here today. And the last time we met them, you know, last season, right, we actually ended up on a draw against them. So let's see if we can actually up our level here today and get all the three points against them in their own turf. All right, so yeah, the, the team will actually have to rise up above the challenge, the pressure, you know, because they are sitting at the top of the Serie A. And yeah, these three games, the next three games is going to be very, very huge for us. We are going to be facing Napoli and Juventus in this episode. And off camera, we are going to be facing Inter Milan. And Michael Olise have actually scored one of the best free kick I've actually watched in Football Manager 23. What the hell was that? Oh my God, no chance for Plogman at all. And... Napoli is actually leading up the goal, but we have a kickoff highlight here. All right, am I am I on key highlights here? Yes, we are on key highlights. So let's see if we can actually pack them immediately and equalize right now against this Napoli team. Now, Sofiana Madi to Doll Hayes, Renato Vega. By the way, guys, you know since uh, the day that I'm recording here right now, right? Football Manager Twenty Four have officially been announced, and yeah, it's going to be released in the november 6th so do let me know in the comment you know will you guys be yo know, pre-ordering this game you know and what is the team that you guys will be managing for the for the football manager beta you know if you guys if you guys are going to pre-ordering you guys know that they will release the beta first right so what is the team that you guys will be managing first in football manager 24 do let me know in the comment and let's see you know what are the difference league that you guys are going to be playing for yet to be honest, I'm really not sure, you know, uh, you know, uh, I'm really not sure whether what 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 is the team that I'm going to be doing, you know, my series on for the for the beta, basically. All right. So, yeah, obviously it's going to be in the English league, I think. All right. But yeah, depending, depending on it, whether there's going to be any new leagues that is going to be coming in. Uh, there's there's actually rumors that J League might be in right now. OK, so hopefully, hopefully, but there's no being uh, there's no official announcement yet. There's going to be no penalty here, obviously. All right, so luckily. All right. And then, yeah. um, Yeah, you know, with uh, Football Manager coming in, you know, FM24 coming in, and obviously the beta will be coming in maybe at about middle of October. I think this series, right, we only have about maybe maximum another two more seasons to go. So we really need to win something. You know, since since the day we started the save, right, we have not won a single silverware as the manager of AC Regiana. So these are the chance, you know, like right now we are at the top of Serie A. Although it's not going well against Napoli here today, but we are at the top of Serie A and we still have a very, very big chance of winning it. Winning our first silverware especially. All right. So yeah, hopefully our team will be up for it and we can actually end this series with at least one or two silverware, you know, either being the Italian Cup, Italian Serie A or maybe a European competition, hopefully. All right, so but it's not looking good for us if we keep on playing like this, right? I think I don't think we are going to be able to get anything out of this team, to be honest. You know, at the end of this series, Kevin Zeffi coming off for 
you know, for the injured Adam Lozak have also not started well. Norman Bassett on 6.3. I'm seriously not looking, you know, it's seriously not looking good for us this uh, in this in this game here. All right, I'm going to stop playing out of defense. We are going to look for overlap, uh, overlap on the left and right hand side. I'm going to, you know, increase the directness, you know, for our passing for now. Slightly more direct. And you know what? Um, let's see. You know what? Uh, should I should I should I go for a higher defensive line? They have very good attacking line. You know what? I I don't want to take that risk. You know, ended up we are gonna we 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 are gonna concede even more. You know what? I'm gonna berate the team here at the start of the second half and let's see if we can turn things around. Lorenzo Colombo is on a six point three, Bassett on a six point three, Kevin Zeffi coming off the bench also six point two. Our defensive line are not playing well at all. Enrique on a six point four as well, and it is the sixty six minute and I need to make some changes. To be honest, I need to make a lot of changes here. Oh my god. I can't be taking off Kevin Zeffi, right? He just came on just now. I'll have to let him play on. Ivan Enrique, I'm going to take off for Petko Kanev. Alright. Lorenzo, uh, Norman Bassett, let's take him off for Samuraro. And you know what? Colombo, you are going to come off for Marcos. Alright, so I'm going to make all these four changes for now. And we are just going to continue playing here. If you look at this, you know, we are not creating a lot of chances here today. We are not Controlling possession as well. I'm not really, really care about the possession because Simon Drugat have, have actually equalized for us. I know this is totally undeserved, but I don't care because the scoreline is 1-1. At the end of the day, you know, no matter how you play on the football pitch, the one that is going to be mattering is the score line. <laughs> All right. We are totally FMing them right now. You know, if we can find a winner in the next 15 minutes, right? It's going to be a total bottle job by Napoli. You know, they are creating a lot of chances. And now, Blogman is playing it long to double Hayes. Doyle Hayes. Why am I talking about double Hayes? Doyle Hayes. Now, Marcos with the possession to Ismail Garbi. Can he find a good pass into Samurano? But I think he's offside. I think he was offside. Okay, the referee is going to be checking with VAR and C. But I think he is offside there. He looked very, very offside. Yeah, the goal has been disallowed. Oh my god, that was our chance. That was an amazing counter-attack by us, you know. A good goal kick by Plogman. And look at this, he was clearly offside there. I'm not sure why Garbi never tried to look for a pass to... I think that was Marcos, you know, in the penalty box as well. He should have done better with the chance. And I think this game is going to end with a 1-1 draw. And yep, with the time trickling away, we are going to get one point against Napoli and to be honest it was an undeserved one point to be honest but in the second half right after I went a little bit more direct and everything we slowly creeped up you know against Napoli and we we started creating more chances we played well against them and we managed to find an equalizer all right so I'm not going to complain a one point it's still a point okay to be honest at this point you know uh, playing against all these big teams even getting a draw is seriously good enough for the team of our caliber. All right. So with that, right, I know Juventus have not played their game in hand yet. Hopefully they will play and they, they will lose. If they lose, it's going to be a guarantee that we will end this episode at the top of Serie A. But if they win, we will have to win against them. Right. That's the only thing that is going to be mattering. And we are going to be playing Juventus in another two more weeks. You know, it's the winter break right now. So, you know, I'm going to play through the two weeks. And I will see you guys in a bit. Do not go anywhere, guys. All right, guys. So before we get into our second match against Juventus, I have a little bit of a transfer news for you guys. All right. So we have actually offered a contract to Patrick Pavre of SC Freiburg. So his initial contract is going to be expiring at the end of the season. And we have a chance of signing him on a free transfer. If you look at him, right, look at his attributes, guys. He is one of the best new gen centre back that I've actually seen in this universe of FM23. All right, look at his mental, his physicals. Oh my God, he is one of the best centre back in the in the game right now. He's even better than Guardiol, to be honest. All right, if you guys have not watched, you know you can actually see my TikTok channel and even my YouTube as well. I've actually made a video on his profile. Okay, so he's huge, but the problem is. There's a lot of teams that have actually put up a bid on him, you know, with the likes of FC Bayern Munich. We even have Real Madrid and PSG. So it is a very, very small chance that he's going to be signing for us, obviously, because of the reputation difference and all. Uh, but if he 
if we manage to get him in our team, right, it is going to be a game changer for us. Next season, I think we will be able to be, you know, in the fourth runner of, you know, challenging for the Champions League, the CDR, and the Italian club as well. You know, hopefully that will happen. Hopefully he will sign for us. But yeah, I'm not going to make, I'm not going to put a lot of hope on this transfer here. All right, so let's see what happens. You know, maybe at the end of this episode, we might know whether he's going to be signing us, signing with us or not. And to be honest, if you look at this, you know, I'm going to be paying him a huge amount of money, you know, 7.4 million per year, you know, if he signs for us. So I'm not sure what's going to happen. I really hope he will sign with us. And I really hope we are going to be able to, you know, pay him his salary when when he joins us i really hope that will happen all right so our opponent our second opponent for today's episode you know juventus they are currently sitting in the second position if you have a look at this only three points behind us they managed to win their their last game which was against uh who was this again uh they played against palermo and they won two nil against them so fair play to them all right so if we lose against them here right they will have the upper hand on the hand to hand as you guys know you know in italian Serie A, in the italian league they don't go by goal difference. They go by points, head to head, and then the goal difference. So if they win against us here, they will have the you know edge or the head to head, and they will go above us in Serie A. All right. So the key player is still a Vlahovic, you know, a thirty years old Vlahovic, and he's still amazing in this save. Twenty one goals scored for them, you know, in all competitions. Seventeen in Serie A. So he's gonna be a threat for us, you know, in goal here today. So hopefully our defense will be able to keep him quiet. All right, they even have the likes of, you know, Udogi playing for them. Look at this guy, you know, left back. This is the left back that we need, you know, if you want to be good in football manager, to be honest. They do play with a formation of 4-3-3. Look at their team, you know, they even have Cody Gagbo playing for them. They have Bremer, Julian Timber, Bamba. So this is a very star-studded team and I really hope our team will be up for the challenge here today. All right. Okay, so our team that I'm going to be, you know, uh, fielding against Juventus here today is going to be Plogman in goal. Our four defenders is going to be Petko Kanev, Simon Druget, Sofiana Madi, and Julian Araujo. Victor Mesegoye will be starting alongside Colo Colo as our two defensive midfielders. Kevin Zeffi, Ismail Garbi, and Marcos will be behind Samararo as our striker up front. If, those of you guys that don't know Samararo, we actually signed him from Roma this season as well. We signed him for 24 million. And to be honest, he's actually playing quite well for us. 11 you know appearances in Serie A and 7 goals scored by him so he is a good player and with Norman Bassett and Lorenzo Colombo not performing against Napoli in the last game I think I'm going to be starting him and give him a chance to prove me wrong all right guys so this is it we have to win against Juventus here to keep our spot at the top of Serie A and as I told you guys you know head to head is very very important in Serie A if we can beat them here today you know, we will have the edge, you know, uh, against Juventus at the end of this season. Because as you guys know, it's a very, very close affair this season, you know, in Serie A. So, yeah, we really need to take our chances whenever we get them. And this is one of the chance for us to first, you know, put some distance, you know, uh, between us and Juventus. And second, get the edge of the head-to-head. -head. All right, we are going to be playing at home here. And let's see if we can take the advantage, you know, uh, of playing in our own stadium against the star started juventus team all right it's going to be our first highlight here bamba with the free kick to esposito now boy back to bamba vla Hovic for juventus playing it sideways to udogi udogi now to bremer bremer playing to udogi again they are playing with a very short passing here if you have a look you know but we managed to win back the possession can we launch a counter attack here marcos on the right hand side he have samararo my goodness and that was a mistake by Hedel there how is that a goal kick? I think that actually hits the defender before it went off the line, right? Okay, so yeah, that was a goal kick, apparently. <laughs> so Bremer now playing it long to Cody Gakpo on the left-hand side, trying to look for Vlahovic, headed clear by Madi, but only until Gakpo. Now Gakpo in the penalty box. Can we stop him from taking a shot? That was an awful shot. Easy save by Plogman. Alright, it is the 23 minutes right now, and if you look at this, Juventus have not had a shot on target. I was just about to say that and they have their first shot on target. But we are still playing well here. I know we are not controlling a lot of possession, but the possession, you know, has been almost, almost, uh, you know, um, equally, you know, uh, controlled by the team. So it's not a big deal. But we actually have 11 shots in total, but only two shots on target. All right, we are playing well. We are creating better chances, but we are not scoring them 
yet. Okay, so I'm going to tell the team that I'm not happy, obviously, you know, because we have to be winning this match. And I'm not going to make a lot of changes. I'm just going to tell the team to work the ball into the box. That's all. You know, we have 11 shots in total, only two on target. So let's let's try to bring it into the penalty box. You know, let's play it slow, you know, and yeah, try to create better chances for our team here. All right, it's the 60th minute. Nothing has actually happened since the start of the second half. I'm not sure what's going on. I think we will have to make a few changes later on. All right, so it's the 65 minute. I need to bring on some new legs into the team. Samurado is on a 6.3. He's not playing well as well. I'm, I, I seriously, guys, I really don't know what to do. I'm going to bring in Lorenzo Colombo, okay, for him. And Kevin Zeffi is also not having a good game. Uh, Adam Hozak is out for another six more weeks, so he's not going to be able to come in, obviously, all right, for the obvious reasons. So I'm going to bring in Cortinovis to play as an inverted winger on the left-hand side. So hopefully he'll be able to do a good job. Julian Araujo is on a yellow card. I don't want to take any risk on that. I'm going to bring in Atanasio for him. So three subs done. I'm going to still ask them to play, you know, work the ball into the box and see if we can create a chance here. Now we have a throw in here. Petko Kanev on the left hand side playing it to Garbi. Now with Kanev. Kanev to Garbi. Inside the penalty box, he has the space for a shot and Colombo. I think he's onside. He's onside. Yeah, coming off the bench, have scored our first goal against Juventus. I, I really thought that Garbi was going to be taking that shot because he, he had that space. You know, if you look at this, right? Look at the replay. Yeah, he had the space to actually put up a shot. But he found the pass to Colombo. And to be honest, that was uh, due to the mistake by the defender. He actually missed the interception. And he managed to, you know, score a goal. Colombo there with a very good position, good finishing. And we are 1-0 up. Okay, so it's going to be another throw in here. Can we score a second goal here? Cortinovis to Kanev. Now Druget with the possession, passing it sideways to Madi, Colo Colo. All right, to Atanasio on the right-hand side, passing it to Garbi, intercepted by Krastev for Juventus. Now Okan trying to play to Davi Nunes. Look at this, you know, they do have Davi Nunes in their team as well. You know, oh my God, Diogo Jota, luckily he was offside. Look at their team, you know. They, they started with Blahovi. Cody Gakpo and Okan, and they did have Diogo Jota and David Nunes on their bench. Oh my god. Seriously, they are so lucky, man, to have, you know, to be honest, you know, to have this type of, uh, this type of squad depth, you know, seriously, I really wish that we have this type of players in our team right now. Okay, but yeah, beggars can't be choosers, right? So we can't really do anything. And now, Juventus actually have a free kick, okay, headed clear by us. And now Ismail Garbi trying to launch a counter-attack through Marcos. Marcos to Lorenzo Colombo. He has the space on the right-hand side, but there's no one supporting him. There's only Marcos. He played it back to Colo Colo. Victor! With a shot, it actually hits the crossbar, but we still have a chance here. Cortinovis to Victor. Victor Messegoya passing it to Colo Colo. Now Ismail Garbi, Colo Colo. Now to Atanasio. Atanasio, what was that? I'm not sure if that was a cross or a shot, but that was awful by him. Okay, we have a corner here by Ismail Garbi trying to look for Sofiana Madi headed clear by the defender. Okay, Ismail Garbi with still the possession in. Oh my God, Udogi. Dispossess him, but Victor Messegoya won it back. Druget to Kanev. Kanev back to Druget again. Colo Colo now with the possession to Druget to Kanev. Cortinovis playing it all the way back to Colo. Oh my God. Okay, I really thought we were going to lose the possession and they're going to launch a counter-attack. But we won it back. Luckily... Oh my goodness, what are we doing here? Davi Nunes won back the possession, but there's no one supporting him. He took a long shot and it was an easy save by Plogman. If you look at this, you know, our team is actually playing really well with Juventus and we have won against Juventus 1-0. If you look at this, you know, in the second half, right? Yeah, I know, the work, the, the, work, the ball into the box actually, actually, you know, uh, played really well, you know, to be honest. You know, we had eight shots on target, 2.16 XG with a possession of five. 56%. Amazing game by the team. You know, they, they, they created really well and we defended really well against Juventus as well. Especially when, you know, Davi Nunes and Diogo Jota came off the bench. They created a lot of chances. They created a lot of trouble for us, but we managed to hold them off. And we have won a well-deserved three points against them. And I'm really, really happy, guys. All right, guys, so for when I'll be back in our next episode, I'm going to be back for our game against Real Madrid and FC Porto in the league phase of the Champions League. So these are the only two games left in the league phase. And if we win them all, 
we will be guaranteed a top eight finish in the league phase, so which is going to be great. And if we can win against Real Madrid, right? Seriously, that will actually give me hope that we have a chance to win the Champions League this season. So if you don't want to miss the episode, you know, against them, all right, do subscribe and like, you know, the 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 video. Especially subscribe, guys. You know, hit on the notification button, you know, and join me in our next episode in this AC Regiana review. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.